Hello, I'm Bishop Reed. Join me now in walking with Jesus on the way of the cross, a powerful way to contemplate, to enter into the mystery of Jesus' gift of himself to us. From the earliest of days, followers of Jesus told the story of his passion, death, and resurrection. When pilgrims came to see Jerusalem, they were anxious to see the places where Jesus had actually walked and where he suffered and died. These sites became sacred connections to the Lord. Eventually, following in the way of his passion and cross became a part of a pilgrimage visit. Over time, villages across Europe started creating replicas of the way of the cross. And these became the 14 stations with which we are so familiar that are present in most of our Catholic churches. Here at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, a particularly beautiful, dramatic, life-size and out of doors way of the cross will be our inspiration for our prayer today. And so let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in Matthew's Gospel, the chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none though many false witnesses came forward. O oh my Jesus, you are not guilty of any crime or any sin. But the people yell, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate finally agrees. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And we read in John's Gospel that the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. And when the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Lord Jesus, the cross is heavy, and it must hurt so much as it is placed on your back. Your back is raw from the scourging and you begin to carry your cross for us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you 
because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Isaiah the prophet writes, We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. Lord Jesus, you fall to the ground beneath the heavy weight of the cross, and pain pierces every part of your body. And those standing by mock you. The fourth station, Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. St. Luke, in his gospel, writes these words, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. Lord Jesus, your heart must break as you see your mother's face, for she feels every pain you feel, and you say goodbye to your mother. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Luke's Gospel, we read, As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. This man, Simon of Cyrene, doesn't want to carry your cross, Lord Jesus, but the soldiers make him. You must be grateful as you struggle to move up the hill toward your crucifixion. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in Isaiah the prophet, There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom men hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. This woman, whom we call Veronica, wipes away the bloody sweat on your suffering face. It is a simple act of kindness, and the image of your pain stains her cloth.
the seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Isaiah the prophet we read, Yes, it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. The street leading up toward Golgotha is narrow and difficult. And so, Jesus, you fall again to your bloody knees. It is so difficult to rise again, but you do. the eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Gospel of Luke records these words. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves. You know all these women, Jesus. You know them through and through. And they know you as the man of sorrow, as the innocent lamb being led to slaughter. And so you try to console them The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In Isaiah the prophet we read, Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. Lord Jesus, this time, perhaps your face hits the hard stone of the street. Your head throbs with pain, but obediently you get up to continue your way to the hill of crucifixion. The 10th station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in John's Gospel, when the soldiers took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier, they also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order 
that the scripture might be fulfilled. No care, no dignity is given to you now, Lord Jesus. Even your clothes are taken. You have nothing left to give except your suffering and final breath. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. St. Matthew in his gospel records these words. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. Nails pierce your wrists first and then your feet. Spikes fix you to the cross. And then the cross is hauled up for all to see. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in the Gospels, It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. In your final hours, your suffering is so great, Lord Jesus, and so you call out to your Father, you feel abandoned. And with a few more words, you release your last breath. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We read in Luke's Gospel, the centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, 
They returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance. Lord Jesus, you died for me, for all of us, and now you feel no pain. No hateful words or lies can wound you. The soldiers pull out the nails and release your body from the wood of the cross. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. St. John's Gospel records these words. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there, for the tomb was close at hand. In a great hurry, your body is wrapped and prepared for burial and laid on a cold stone. You are given a borrowed grave, Lord Jesus, the sun goes down, and the world awaits the resurrection. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your passion and death is the sacrifice that unites earth and heaven and reconciles all people to yourself. May we who have faithfully reflected on these mysteries follow in your steps and so come to share in your glory in heaven. Will you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.